Welcome to Kilbarkin Parish Church and to this online reflection. It's good to have you join us today, whether you're joining us in person for worship or via the website or the YouTube channel. Welcome. The church grounds are looking glorious. We want to say thank you to all those who take the time and spend effort uh, caring for the church grounds. Thank you, they really, we appreciate all that you do. A few folks have said, Stephen, you're really rocking that Hugh Grant look with the hair. I think I'm really rocking, looking like a Shetland pony. But good news is just on its way. Hopefully, by the time you see next week's reflection, you will see a shorn Steve. The theme for this morning's service will be looking forward next week to Christian Aid Week. Last year, with the restrictions surrounding the coronavirus, door-to-door -door collections did not take place, but we were still able to raise roughly £2,900 thanks to the generosity of the church and the community of Kowakim. This year, there are still restrictions in place. We managed to deliver <coughs> some envelopes to many of the homes in the villages. Please, if you would like to support Christian Aid, can you return your envelope? <coughs> either to the Church Hall or to Brookfield Village Hall on Saturday the 15th of May. Obviously, you can also give by um, donating via the Just Giving page, which is on our church website. And also we have a church quiz, a Christian Aid quiz, if you'd like to take part in that. It's a bit of a brain teaser. Um, I'm no good at these sort of things, but I know many of you are. Our call to worship this morning. In John's Gospel, Jesus said, A new commandment I give to you. Love one another, just as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, that they lay down their life for their friends. Let us worship God. Our reader this morning is Alec Ritchie. He will be reading from Acts chapter 10, a few verses there and from St John's Gospel, chapter 15. And George and Myra will lead us in the hymn, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. Our first reading today comes from the book of Acts, chapter 10, verses 44 to 48, and it's entitled, The Gentiles Receive the Holy Spirit. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit came down on all those who were listening to his message. The Jewish believers who had come from Joppa with Peter were amazed that God had poured out his gift of the Holy Spirit on the Gentiles also. For they heard them speaking in strange tongues and praising God's greatness. Peter spoke up. These people have received the Holy Spirit, just as we also did. Can anyone then stop them from being baptized with water? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked him to stay with them for a few days. The second reading is from the book of John, chapter 15, reading verses 9 to 17. I love you just as the Father loves me. Remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that joy may be complete. My commandment is this, love one another just as I love you. The greatest love a person can have for his friends is to give his life for them. And you are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because a servant does not know what his master is doing. Instead, I call you friends, because I have told you everything. I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me. I chose you and appointed you to go and bear much fruit, the kind of fruit that endures. And so the Father will give you whatever you ask him, in my name. 
This then is what I command you, love one another. May God add his blessing to this, the reading of his holy word, and to his name be the glory and the praise. Thank you, Alec, and thank you, George and Myra. All you need is love. Blah, 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 blah. All you need is love. Blah, 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 blah. All you need is love. Love. Love is all you need. So sang the Beatles in 1967, a great pop song written by John Lennon, a song that lives on in the hearts and the minds of so, so many. A song that's timeless. All you need is love. Is that true? And if it is true, what kind of love is able to fulfill all our needs? Our readings this morning point us to love. The love God has for us. The love that we ought to have for God. And the love we ought to have for others. There's a story told of the young mum preparing pancakes for her two sons, the older boy, Kevin, was five and his wee brother, Ryan, was three. The boys began to argue over who would get the first pancake and mum, seeing the opportunity for a, a wee teaching moment, a, a wee moral lesson, she said to them, If Jesus were sitting here, she said, he would say, Let my brother have the first pancake. I can wait. Kevin, the older boy, turned to his wee brother and said, Right, Ryan. You can be Jesus, brotherly love. What is Jesus trying to say in today's gospel? We've heard this reading countless times before, but there's so much depth to it. He seems to be talking about a, a circle of love. The Father loves the Son, and the Son loves the Father. The Son loves us, and we are to love him. Loving and obeying the Son means being loved by the Father. 
And being loved by the Son means loving one another. And if we do all this, we'll be happy. We'll hit the jackpot, win the lottery, experience great joy, and we won't have to wait until we've drawn our last breath here on earth. It'll happen right here, right now. All we need is love. The Gospel and John Lennon seem to agree. Could anything be more simple? Could anything be that simple? Love makes everything okay. Love your family, love your friends, love your neighbours, your parishioners, your fellow citizens, the strangers, the refugees, the beggars in our streets, those who drive above the speed limit, speed limit, those who drive below the speed limit, those we can't bear to look at or be with, love our enemies, love them all. Excuse me for being just a little sceptical and pouring cold water on this, but nothing could be further, it sometimes seems, from the world we live in. It's not easy to listen to John's gospel about love, rambling on and on about love. Life just isn't that way. It sounds like an ideal, utopian world, something we'd all like, but we know we'll not see. It's the stuff of dreams, wishes and prayers, but it can never be. And yet, and yet love seems to be the essence at the very core and heart of the gospel it's about what the Christian faith is all about. How do we proclaim the love of God? By loving others? In the other reading, in the Acts of the Apostles, the gospel is seen to be something that overcomes barriers and boundaries. It's something that overcomes the labels and structures that we place on people. In our reading this morning from the Acts of the Apostles, the point was that this gospel, this good news, of God's love and care in Jesus, was it to be for Jews only? No, it was for others too, for Gentiles, for folks who were different. And today, it's still for all people, for you and for me, and for folks who are not like us, for folks of all, of every hue and cry. This coming week is Christian Aid Week and in all our awareness raising and in all of our giving, we are in some way demonstrating how much we love not only one another, but how much we love others, others who are perhaps different in some ways from ourselves, how much we love those who are materially poorer than we are. A wise person once said, the measure of love is to love without measure. I'm sure and I hope we can give generously. In just a few weeks, the General Assembly of the Church of Scotland will be meeting online. It's a bit like the church's AGM. There will be some tough decisions to be taken, but at the heart of all the debates and the discussions and all the decision making, the church will be continuing to seek to be a church that is faithful to the gospel of God's extravagant and unconditional love a love that cannot be measured, and yet a love that reaches out to you and to me. In some of the debates, the church will be asking the difficult question of how we, as a church, can reach out to others, to the young and the young at heart in our villages, towns, cities, nation and our world. Every single one, every single human being, a child of God. And God is a God of extravagant love. Full stop. No Bible exams to pass for entry to this group or club. No passport to show. No creed or doctrine to adhere to or subscribe to, to be loved by God. Every human being loved equally as a child of God. Irrespective of creed or colour or gender or sexuality or lifestyle choices. Choices. Just a few days ago, on Thursday, we were asked to make our choice as to whom we wanted to govern our nation. We were asked to select and to mark that selection with a cross. God ticks all our boxes. It doesn't matter whether we voted for Douglas 
or Alba or someone totally different, God has voted for you. God loves each one equally. As someone once said, loving each one as if there were only one to love. And those who claim to follow the teaching of Jesus are commanded to love even as God loves. And that can be hard, for some of us have more prejudices and blind spots and blinkers than we've had hot dinners. God's love has no boundaries and no limits. God's love is constant and it never slips or fails. God's love is trustworthy and dependable. It's always there and always will be there. When the words love one another were first spoken by Jesus, he expressed them in a very particular way, as a commandment. He didn't say, listen up, I've got a great suggestion for you. He didn't say, here's an idea I want you to consider that's up for debate. He didn't say, if you do something else, how about loving one another? He didn't put it like that at all. No, he decided that the best way to convey the importance of loving others was to say it, to state it, as a commandment. A commandment that leaves no questions or grey areas about what he wants us to do. God showed how much he loves us. Do we need any greater proof than the life and the death and resurrection of Jesus? God showed how lovable each one is. He showed how lovable the world is. The world is worth loving. And God wants us to live our lives like everyone else, like the whole world matters. He wants us to live our lives caring about what happens to every human being. He wants us to live our lives doing love, not just thinking and talking about it. So love God, love everyone, and don't complicate things by arguing about the specifics. We all know what it means to do love because at some time or another we have been on the receiving end of love. We began this reflection with a Beatles song and I'm going to finish it with a few lines, I'm not going to sing them this time, from a musical, Aspects of Love. Love changes everything, hands and faces, earth and sky. Love, love changes everything, how you live, and how you die. Yes, love. Love changes everything. Nothing in the world will ever be the same. Love will turn your world around. Love changes everything. Nothing in the world will ever be the same. Love changes everyone. Love will never let you be the same. If we want the world to be a better place, we have to love, to do love. So do a little, do a lot, but for God's sake, do some. And now Rosie will play for us a reflective piece of music, an etude by Chopin.
Let us pray. God our Father, in your love you welcome us as your children. Through your care you have shaped the universe. With your mercy you hear our prayers. Jesus, our risen Master, in our weakness you call us. In our confusion you teach us. In our troubles you offer us peace. Holy Spirit, living one, in the beginning you breathed life. In chaos and darkness you brought hope. In many tongues you spread the good news. Transform us, your people, as we open our minds and our hearts to you. You love the world into life. Forgive us when our dreams of the future are shaped by anything other than glimpses of a kingdom of justice, peace and an end to poverty. You taught us to speak out for what is right. Make us content with nothing less than a world that is transformed into the shape of love, where poverty shall be no more. Let there be abundant life, and inspire us with the vision of poverty over, and give us the faith, the courage, and the will to make it happen. For your world and your children, we bring our prayers to you. We remember those who are misunderstood, those who have not known love, those who struggle to care, those who live in fear, those who bring fear to others, those living with wounds and scars, those confronted with death and loss, those who grieve the loss of a loved one this day, those who seek understanding, those who are content. Lord, we pray for your world and your children, and we pray for open hearts and minds. Hear our prayers for those in our world who continue to suffer the consequences of the global pandemic. Help us to find just and fair ways to share resources to combat coronavirus in some of the poorest and most populated places in our world. We pray especially for the people of India and the continent of Africa this morning. Hear our prayers this week for those who have recently been elected to serve in public office. Help them to govern wisely. And we pray for the work of Christian Aid and its partners around the world. May volunteers and staff in some of the poorest communities never be overwhelmed when faced with great need. And may they continue to find hope in the most unexpected places. We pray for one another, for loved ones going through times of difficulty for the ill, the dying and the bereaved. Loving God, you give strength for today and hope for tomorrow. In life, in death and in life beyond death, you are with us. Hear us now as we pray together in words that Jesus taught in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory for ever. Amen. Thanks to everyone who took part in this morning's reflection. Alec for his reading, George and Myra for the hymn, Rosie for her piano piece, and Alan and Emma for putting it all together. Next week, when you see me, hopefully I'll have had a haircut. I'll be Shorn Steve. And until next week, take care, stay safe, and know that whatever you face, God is with you.